Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering a question from the June 2018 Edexcel C4 paper. This is related to P4 material. This is about um, differentiation, implicit differentiation, in fact. And here it tells us to use implicit differentiation to find dy dx in terms of x and y for this equation of this curve. Now, implicit differentiation is used in the case where we don't have something explicitly written as y equals some function of x. To make y the subject of this is going to be quite laborious. So for us to have a y in terms of x and then find dy dx is going to be quite a challenge. So what we're going to do is we're going to find dy dx by means of implicit differentiation. Okay, and our answer will be in terms of x and y terms. All right, so now um, what you have to understand when we do implicit differentiation is uh, some of the, I'm going to lay some of the groundwork down so you understand things in a more clear fashion. Right. So first of all, when we are differentiating something like y equals, say, uh, 2x cubed plus 3x squared plus 4, for example, um, we learned how to do this in IGCSE and GCSE days, even some of us. Right. And we just know, OK, when we want to differentiate real white dy dx. OK, so it says y equals y dy dx. And then we just multiply by the power, take one from the power, multiply by the power, take one from the power, and a constant just becomes zero. All right, that's what we learned. And if it was an x term, for example, the x term drops to x, you're left with four. So we know that this is going to be 6x squared plus 6x plus 4 plus zero. All right, now that's how we've learned how differentiation works. OK, now basically... Actually, what's going on, and this is something that we don't normally write down. Okay, we don't write down these steps. But what we're doing is we're differentiating one side of the equation with respect to x. And we're also differentiating the whole of the other side of the equation with respect to x. 2x cubed plus 3x squared plus 4x plus 5. That's what we're actually doing. This is actually... What we're doing to one side of the equation, we're doing exactly the same to the other. Okay, now when you differentiate these terms with respect to x, I'll start with this side. Um, basically, with differentiation, we can differentiate each term individually. And it's the same as, you know, this, we'll get the same answer as if, you know, we can just add them together, basically. So we're going to differentiate 2x cubed, and then we're going to differentiate 3x squared with respect to x and differentiate 4x with respect to x, and we're going to differentiate 5 with respect to x. Okay. And we end up with this, 6x squared plus 6x plus 4, because so that's a 4x, plus 0. Right, that's what happens. So we differentiate each term separately. Now, when we differentiate y with respect to x, okay, we differentiate y with respect to x, okay, by definition, that's dy dx. Okay, that's why it's called dy dx. But we're also doing something else. We're also, um, it's like, this is like y to the power of 1, you could say. Right? So we're, we're multiplying by the power, taking 1 from the power, so we end up with, um, you know, basically 1. And then we multiply by the differential of what's inside the function, which is y. So we, we, we're multiplying by dy dx. Okay, the differential of what's inside the function is y. The differential of y with respect to x is dy dx. So basically... It becomes dy dx. Okay, so when you differentiate y with respect to x, that means by definition dy dx. That's that's how we can think about it. Okay, well, I'll leave that part till later on. Okay, so dy dx is the differential of y with respect to x. So that's how we get our answer. Right now, the reason why I'm going through this in this kind of um, kind of long-winded bit way, just to make you realize that in mathematics, what we do to one side of the equation, we do the same to the other. We're just following that same thing, just like you did in primary school when you're solving a normal equation. Add add something to some one side, you add something to this, add the same thing to the other side. You do something to one side, you square one side of the equation, you square the other side of the equation. You take the square root of one side, you take the square root of the other side, and so on. Okay, all of those are principles that we know of from our you know, understanding of mathematics from and solving equations. So here what we're going to do is we're going to differentiate the whole of this side with respect to x and the whole of that side with respect to x. So I'm going to differentiate all of this side. So you're going to differentiate x squared 
plus xy plus y squared minus 4x minus 5y plus 1. All of that differentiates with respect to x and differentiate 0 with respect to x. So, of course, that's going to give us 0 on this side. Okay, and I'm going to end up with 0 on that side. Now, on this side, we can, as I said, we can differentiate each term individually. So, this is one term. Differential of x squared with respect to x is just 2x. We know that. Then we have plus xy. Now, xy is a product of two separate functions. So, to differentiate that, I'm going to have to use the product rule. So I'm going to call one of the products u and the other product I'm going to call it v. So u is x and v is y. And I'm going to take the differential of u that gives me 1 and the differential of y, if I differentiate y with respect to x, as we mentioned, it's dy dx. And we know that when we use the product rule, we multiply these two and those two and add them together. I always like to start with this in this order because that's the same as a quotient rule and you subtract them. It just makes it easier for me. Most books would go the other way. I like to go start with this way for even the product rule. So y times 1, which is y, plus x times dy dx. Okay, because we had to differentiate y with respect to x, which means dy dx. Now for the next term, we're going to differentiate y squared with respect to x. Now, this is where we have to think a little bit y squared is some function of x. So you have a function inside a function. You have something which we're going to apply the, well, the, the, the chain rule for. If I, in, if I differentiate this, I have to multiply by the powers. I have 2 times y to the power of 1. But then I have to also multiply by the differential of what's inside the function. And the differential of y is dy dx. If I differentiate y with respect to x. So I end up with 2y dy dx. Okay, if you think about it, we actually did the same thing for the x squared. We actually did the same thing for this. So we multiplied by the power. We took one from the power and then we differentiated by, we, we multiplied by the differential what's inside the function. If you differentiate x with respect to x, you get 1. So we get 2x. So we kind of did the same thing, but it doesn't look like it, right? So it's the same thing. So if I, do, if I differentiate x times y, I get this from the, 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 the product rule, okay? Um, so I get this from the product rule. So this is x, y. That's that integrated, di differentiated. And 2y is 2y times dy dx. And then I've got minus 4x gives you minus 4. Minus 5y gives us minus 5. Then I have to write dy dx because of the chain rule. And plus 1 gives us 0, <coughs> right? So <coughs> we end up with this as our differentiated equation, all right? So that's what we've got so far. So basically what you should notice is every time there's a y term, okay, that you're differentiating, okay, you always end up with something times dy dx. So if I differentiate 2y, I get 2y, uh, y squared, I get 2y dy dx. If I differentiate minus y, 5y, I get minus 5 dy dx. Differentiate minus 5y gives you minus 5. <clears throat> but because it's in terms of y, you must multiply by dy dx for it to be, for you to have applied the chain rule. So now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to collect all the dy dx terms on one side, and they already are on one side. So I have x dy dx <clears throat> plus 2y dy dx minus 5 dy dx. And then I'm going to all the non dy dx terms, I'm going to keep the, the right side of the equation for them. So I have to subtract them from both sides. Or in fact, for this minus 4, I'll add it to both sides. And for this, I have minus 2x and minus y. So I've added 4 to both sides and taken away 2x and y from both sides. And this is what I end up with. Now what I can do is, is I can make dy dx, I can take it out as a common factor from this three terms. So I have x plus 2y minus 5 equals 4 minus 2x minus y. So therefore dy dx is going to equal 4 minus 2x minus y over x plus 2y minus 5. And that is an expression for dy, for dy dx in terms of x and y. Now if you had decided to keep the dy dx terms on the right side of the equation, 
then your equation would look like this, which would be y plus 2x minus 4 over x minus, or it will be 5, you could say 5 minus x minus 2y, everything would change sign. Okay, you'd have something that looks like this, and they're exactly the same thing. They're exactly the same thing. Everything's the opposite sign of what it was at the top. So it's it's like, you know, it's like saying minus 2 over 3 and minus or 2 over minus 3. They both have the same value, minus 2 thirds. So these two both have the same value. The signs on the top are, are, are opposite from the ones underneath in both cases. So they're both fine. I mean, I would personally leave my answer like this. But if you've got that answer down, it's also perfectly acceptable. It just depends which side you decided to keep your dy dx's on. All right, so there's your answer to 2 part A. Now we're going to go on to 2 part B. Okay, now for 2 part B. To find the x coordinates of the two points on the curve C where dy dx equals 0. So we have dy dx. Oops, my pen changed color. Okay, I think I also need something else. I need the equation. Hold on. Okay, so I have the equation of the curve. I have the gradient function. So this tells us about the gradient. And this tells us about the actual function. So we got to find the x coordinates of the two points on C. So only we, we only need the x coordinates. So that's something to take note of. All right, so in case we go on to find the co the coordinates and trying to find the y ones, probably making life difficult for ourselves. We only want the x coordinates of the two points on C where dy dx equals zero. So the first thing is we got to equate dy dx to zero. Okay, so we got to equate dy dx to zero. So we can say um, dy dx equals zero. So you have five minus two x minus y over x plus two y minus five equals zero. Okay, now basically. That tells you when the gradient is zero. The gradient of zero. The gradient is zero, okay. When you can say the change in y is zero, okay. So when this part equals zero, okay. And if you try to solve this equation, you'd have to multiply both sides by the denominator. You'll end up with four minus two x minus y equals zero, okay. So the numerator of the gradient function equals zero when the line is horizontal, when the gradient is equal to zero. So here what we formed is, we, we, we end up with, you can add 2x and y to both sides, you end up with 2x plus y equals 4. All right, now this is an equation which is going to help us, but we have to use it in conjunction with this to actually solve the equation. We know that at the point where the gradient is zero, this equation is satisfied. And also, this equation is also satisfied by the x and y values. Which So the x and y values that satisfy this equation here must also satisfy this equation there because that point where the gradient is zero lies on this line. Okay, it lies on this line. So now, what we're going to do is I'm going to rearrange this and write y equals 4 minus 2x. Okay, I'm not going to... I don't know why I circled it because it's not my final answer. But I boxed it. No need for us to do that. Okay, so I know that y equals 4 minus 2x. Now, if I take that, y equals 4 minus 2x, and I substitute, instead of y, 4 minus 2x, that will leave me an equation just in x, which I can then solve. Right, and that's the key to these type of questions. So the student who asked this question, they wanted part B. That's where they get stuck. They get to that stage, and they don't know what to do. There's two unknowns. What do we do with these two unknowns? Well, the solution to this equation, the x and y values that satisfy this equation will also satisfy that equation as well because that, that is a point on this curve, all right? So this tells us x and y values when the gradient is zero and the same x and y values will satisfy this equation because this the points where this happens is also on the curve, all right? So that's how we deal with this. So I'm going to now replace the y with 4 minus 2x in each of these terms. So the x squared is fine. I got plus x times instead of y, 4 minus 2x. Minus 4x minus, oh sorry, plus y squared. Be careful. So this is done, this is done, plus y squared. So it's going to be plus 4 minus 2x all squared. And then I'm going to have minus 4x, which is fine. Then minus 5 times 4 minus 2x plus 1 equals 0. So now when I expand this and simplify it, hopefully I'll get an equation which I can solve for x and I can find two values for x which will satisfy that equation and I've got my answer. So we've got x squared plus 4x minus 2x squared. And then when we expand this bracket, you're going to have plus. If you square 4, you get 16. If you multiply these two together, you get minus 8x times 2, that's minus 16x. And if I square that, I get plus 4x squared. 
then I've got minus 4x, then I've got minus 5 times 4, which is negative 20, and minus 5 times minus 2x, which is plus 10x, and I've got my plus 1 here at the end, equals 0. Okay, so let's collect the like terms. So you have x squared, minus 2x squared, plus 4x squared. Okay, so that's going to give me 3x squared. Okay, that's my, that's going to be minus 1x squared plus 4x squared, that's 3x squared. So the x squared terms, I've taken care of them now. Then we've got the x terms. We've got 4x minus 16x, which is minus 12x. Minus 4x, which is minus 16x again. Okay, you can think of 4x four, and minus 4 cancelling out. So you've got minus 16x plus 10 is minus 6x. So I've, I've dealt with all the x terms now. And the numbers are 16 minus 20, which is minus 4 plus 1, which is minus 3, equals 0. So I end up with this equation, which for me to solve, I can simplify by dividing both sides by 3. So I end up with x squared minus 2x minus 1 equals 0. Now I need to solve this equation. This is a quadratic equation. This is a pretty easy one. I think we'll go into straight into two brackets. So we have x. One of them will be plus, one would be minus. And it has to be, um, let's have a look. The two numbers multiply to give you, let's have a look. Minus 1. So one, one must be plus 1. No, this doesn't work, does it? It doesn't factorize. What does the question say? Give me your answer in the in their simplest form. Okay, exact answers. All right, so this doesn't factorize. In fact, I should have read that in the beginning, and I should have realized that it's not going to factorize because it says give exact answers in the simplest form. So what I've got to do is I've got to use the formula or complete the square. Now, I'm going to complete the square to keep it fresh in your mind. So you could use either. We, we can use either formula or complete the square. Now, some students will ask, why can't we just use a calculator? The mark scheme doesn't give any marks for this or that, whatever. The, the advice is for the examiners that in all the pure papers, the, that quadratic equations should be solved either by factorizing or by using the quadratic formula or by completing the square. And sometimes you'll find cases which have been decided after the exam has been sat, okay, where they might um, overlook that particular question. So don't just, you know, assume that they will do so. All right, so it's always better to be safe than sorry. So it's better for you to actually work out and use your calculator as a check in case you made a mistake. That's all. Okay, so here what I'm going to do is I'm going to complete the square. So this is ready to complete the square. So I can just put x minus a half of this coefficient, which is 1 squared, and take away the square of this, which is 1, and that's equal to 1. Okay, so this is the same as that, right? This will be x squared minus 2x plus 1 minus 1, x squared minus 2x, and that's equal to 1. So now I can add 1 to both sides. So I have x minus 1 squared equals 2. I can take the positive square root of both sides. So x minus 1 squared equals plus or minus root 2. So therefore, x equals 1 plus root 2, or x equals 1 minus root 2. Those are the two values of x, okay, um, for which the gradient is equal to zero. Okay, so that concludes this question. This question number um, 2b. Now, this is a very typical type of question involving parametrics, where you end up with something, you know, where the gradient is zero, or sometimes it might say the gradient is parallel to the y-axis. In that case, you'd make the denominator zero. You'd make the denominator zero. Okay, because when the denominator is zero, it's undefined. Right. In this case, the gradient is zero, so you take the numerator of the gradient function, make that zero. Okay, and but you end up with an equation with two unknowns because our equation is in terms of x and y. So what do we do next? Well, we understand that the equation or the x and y values that satisfy this equation will also satisfy that equation. So we solve them simultaneously, like we learned how to do in P1, and we end up with our answer. They only want the x values. We don't need to write the y values, and that's it. That's our answer. Thank you for watching. Other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that will appear over here. Other questions from the topic of um, differentiation, implicit differentiation, can be found in the playlist over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link and watch a video here that tells you how to navigate through my channel efficiently. Thank you for watching and see you soon.